some of you may, and some of you may not have seen the movie Ex Machina, which was released a couple years ago. So without giving away too many details of the movie, it's essentially a man falls in love with a robot. And in the end, the robot deceives the man and escapes from her captivity. Now this may seem kind of absurd, but this is becoming increasingly realistic with advances in artificial intelligence. So what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is the science of creating intelligent computer programs and machines. So there are very many examples that are already out there today. So Siri on your phone is artificial intelligence. Um, when you ask her a question, she actually has to interpret what you're saying and be adaptable to um, come up with the best answer possible. Now Siri isn't always accurate. Sometimes she'll say, what did you say? Or um, can you say that again? And um, this is because she's not perfect. Like Siri doesn't have human intelligence, which is very different from that of machine. So self-driving cars are another example, and they're not that much different from something like Siri in that they have to be adaptable to their environment and their surroundings. So it has to know when to stop and when to turn. Um, however, these aren't released to the roads yet because they're a lot more dangerous and they uh, pose a lot more dangerous than something like Siri. So scientists are doing this by something called fuzzy logic. And this is um, these are machines that process language rather than code. And this is allowing machines to start to mimic human intelligence more and more. Now, artificial intelligence as used today is pretty harmless. Like, something like Siri is not going to pose any really potential dangers. However, as this technology becomes more advanced, it could become threatening to the economy and the safety of society. So first I'm going to talk about a couple ways that artificial intelligence is already used today. And then I'm going to go into some theories about how it might affect the future. So, um, currently, Artificial intelligence is programmed to do labor. So a lot of companies are investing in machines because they are more efficient and they save them time and money. So machines, they don't need like a salary and they don't need breaks and they don't make as much human error as people do. Um, so while initially it costs a lot of money for a company to invest in machinery, um, they hope that in the long run it's gonna save them money. So however, the job field, the job market is changing in response to increased technology. There are a lot of jobs that exist now that never existed before. However, the increase in the number of jobs um, is less than the amount of jobs that are being taken by machines. In addition to this, machines in years to come could replace more specialized laborers, for example, bankers, meteorologists, or even doctors, as they become smarter and more adaptable. So, um, in addition to this, artificial intelligence is expensive and it can malfunction. Um, the costs of this malfunction do not um, outweigh the benefits of these machines. So for example, if a company invests in a machine to do labor, they also have the ability to make mistakes, just not as much as humans do. Um, and if they do make these mistakes, then um, it's actually going to end up costing a company more money. Um, so I've kind of deduced that technology can be beneficial if it supplements a human's abilities, um, whereas if it overtakes their abilities, then that can come to be potentially dangerous. So there are two types of um, cars that use artificial intelligence. One is that these are actually already released on the market. They can break when they sense danger. So this kind of supplements a human's ability if they're not paying attention and there's like a car in front of them. They can like, the car will stop for them. Um, and this just eliminates that margin of human error. Whereas a car that drives itself, um, these aren't released for the roads yet, but the ones in testing, they can't tell the difference between a crumpled paper bag and a rock that's about the same size that they should avoid. Um, a third point is that artificial intelligence is projected to be used in war. And um, so you guys have probably all heard of drones. And drones are um, machines where people control them from behind like a remote from far away. And um, drones can be used to release and drop bombs. But um, with the development of autonomous weapons, which are weapons that do this without a person controlling them, they actually choose where to go, they decide what their target is, and when to fire. So this can be really dangerous because it's mass slaughter in the absence of human emotion, and one mistake could be detrimental to the lives of very many people. So these are some um, consequences of artificial intelligence that are really imminent in society. Um, but in the future, uh, there's a possibility that artificial intelligence can come to compete with human intelligence. So we measured this by um, what's called the Turing test. And it was created by Alan Turing in the 1950s. And um, it measures really how smart is a machine. So this is kind of like 
having a conversation, a keyboard conversation with a computer. Um, Are they older? So like, it would be like if you were having a conversation with Siri, but instead of her speaking the answers back to you, she was typing them back through a computer. Um, and a person talks to this machine, and they have to determine whether they're talking to a computer or another person. Um, and this is really hard for a computer to pass. So the for a computer to pass the Turing test, they have to trick the person 30% of the time. And this was kind of unheard of until pretty recently, in 2014, um, a London computer named Eugene passed the first Turing test at 33%. So Ray Kurzweil, the director of engineering for Google, stated that machines are on track to be on par with human intelligence in less than 15 years. And by 2029, they will read at human levels and understand language and be able to communicate at human levels. So how will this affect people and how will this affect society? It's a little bit of a two-sided argument, um, and there's a lot of uncertainty, almost too much so to speculate, but um, some people believe that machines may never reach full human intelligence because they lack a lot of human qualities, such as judgment, consciousness, and emotion. Um, however, as machines are coming, becoming smarter and smarter, they're starting to mimic these qualities that humans have. So in conclusion, artificial intelligence as used today is harmless. However, as it advances, it becomes less predictable and therefore is a potential danger. Um, artificial intelligence as used today is bridging the gap between science fiction and reality. Awesome. Good job, Casey. Hold on one second. Um, advice for anybody who wants to investigate the same thing. Where should they start? Um, I have researched a lot online. I actually read a lab from, um, it was like a lab done by Stanford that talks about some implications of artificial intelligence. Um, I really liked the movie Ex Machina, which I uh, talked about in the beginning of my talk. I thought it kind of posed like an interesting question on whether or not machine intelligence can ever reach the capacity of human intelligence. Okay. And what did you like or not like about Genius Hour? Be completely honest. Um, I both liked and did not like how much time and how much flexibility we had in it. I thought it was interesting that we were able to really research something that was like interesting to us, but then at the same time, I felt like it was a little bit hard to like get a start into like what we really wanted to do. Okay, awesome. Thanks.